Now, with schools closed to most children across the UK once more, the challenges faced by disadvantaged pupils who don't have the equipment they need have reappeared. Last summer, local BBC Radio's Make a Difference campaign saw thousands of old laptops and tablets donated by businesses and members of the public for school children across England. And with the new lockdown in effect, the BBC is rebooting its campaign. Well, we can speak now to Tim Boys, who is CEO of the Birmingham Education Partnership. Tim, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us on BBC News. Tell us a bit more about the partnership, first of all, and what exactly it is that you do. Thank you. Well, the partnership is... Uh six years old and it's an umbrella organization that tries to look after all the schools in Birmingham. We uh, have the, the responsibilities for Birmingham City Council for school improvement but we try and do a lot more than that to uh, to make the very best of education in this uh, important city. And if you were to uh, in broad brush brushstrokes tell us about the, the the scale of the digital divide at the moment what would you say because obviously schools have been working very hard to try to supply disadvantaged pupils uh, especially since the first lockdown, with the equipment that they might need. And the government, uh, the Prime Minister certainly has been talking in the last few days about getting these sorts of supplies to schools. But but what are you seeing? So um, yeah, it's easy to be overwhelmed by big numbers. But you know, to take a, a city like Birmingham, uh, we have something like a quarter of a million school children. And something like 40% of those will be from uh, families that, that are really in some form of poverty. It's, it's worth remembering that when we talk about pupil premium children uh, or disadvantaged children, we're talking about children from homes with an income of, of, of under £16,000 a year. Um, when we consider how many overcrowded homes we've got, really, we're looking at households with, with quite a few children in them. And the thought that each one of those children really could be right now sitting down in front of a, a live lesson, uh, tuning into the Oak National Academy, watching really good teaching and, and engaging with it and working uh, in, in a productive way. Um, it's not hard to spot that, you know, in a, in a city like Birmingham, there are probably, um, you know, 100,000 children um, who are, are have not got the kind of equipment that they need. You put that across the country where 22% of children are, are, are classified as disadvantaged, um, that there are huge numbers of children. So whilst the government has been trying to, to distribute really large numbers of devices, uh, we know on the ground that a, a kind of a centralised distribution system um, isn't scratching the surface. And, and unfortunately, it doesn't always get to where it's most needed. You know, the mm. school that's quicker out of the blocks, it's a first come, first serve system sometimes, um, you know, might have done quite well if they were at the front of the queue. But there are schools at the back of the queue who are absolutely crying out for help with, with devices, with technology, knowing that they've got a lot of children at home, the children that we're most concerned about not falling behind, just not able to access what, what's increasingly quite a good offer for, for distance learning. Uh, and of course, it's about affordability to pay for Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, not just about delivering a physical device to a home. Uh, it's about getting children engaged, even if they have a device, compared with the sort of engagement you might get in a face-to-face -face lesson in a school. So it's really difficult to quantify. We know that pupils without these devices are going to be disadvantaged educationally. Do you think that they can catch up? I think that, you know, as with everything around this pandemic, we're, we're, we're managing damage limitation. Um, what we've seen in Birmingham with, with raw food poverty is that where schools can really engage well with families in need, the relationship between the family and the school is strengthened. So everything that we can do to help and support families that are really struggling now is, is useful damage limitation. We're mitigating against really significant risks and the risks to, to capable children, talented children who just aren't accessing a decent education now is, is considerable and it will be one with long-term damage. But anything we can do now, as you say, that doesn't just address device poverty, but even more importantly, the connectivity issue. You know, we, we are getting um, re reconditioned laptops into, into homes for, for 100 pounds uh, a machine but we need 300 pounds for a year's connectivity um but but that okay. issue of of Tim. families that have gone 
Uh, Tip, I'm, I'm really sorry to, to interrupt you because we are almost out of time and I do want to get our message across about how people can donate laptops. But thank you so much for speaking to us. Hopefully we can speak about this some more. Tim Boyes, CEO of Birmingham Education Partnership, thank you. And if you do have a laptop or tablet that you want to donate, then please go to bbc.co.uk forward slash make a difference where you can find details of charities who will help get them safely wiped and sent to the children that need them the most. It's time now for the weather. Here's Carol.